Okay. Uh, I had some people ask me some questions during the break, and I thought I'd take a minute and just answer them for you right now. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. And, uh, and no. So, so if you have any others, why, feel free to bring them up. <laughs> uh, years ago, when uh, I was, in fact, I was coming from the East Coast to San Diego to my first squadron, and stopped at the Grand Canyon, and it was a real quiet day at the Grand Canyon. There just weren't people around. And I was wandering through this big gift shop. It was probably as big as this room. It was a large gift shop, and there was only one other family there, a father and a mother, and a son and daughter. I think the daughter was probably around 13. The boy was about eight. And you know, with an eight-year-old boy in a gift shop, he was just, oh, he was having a wonderful time. He, you know, rubber tomahawks from New Jersey and all these wonderful souvenirs of, of Arizona. And you could hear him all over the store. And he was, Dad, oh, Dad, look at these. Dad, can I have one of these? And uh, Dad was a pro. He'd been at this for a while. And he was just walking down the aisles this way. And no, no. Oh, Dad, can I have one of these? I really like one of these. No, no, no. Oh, Dad, look at these. Th oh, these are really neat. Gee, I really like that one. It's good to have one of these. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, it was obvious that appealing to Dad's good nature was not going to work. And so he did what kids do. He decided to go for guilt. And uh, so the next time he picked something, he said, Oh, Dad, oh, I'd really like one of these, Dad. Dad please, Dad, can I have one of these? Dad, no, no, no. So then at the top of his voice, he says, Gee whiz, Dad, you never buy me anything. And Dad, without even missing a step, said, Well, then, there's no sense starting now. <laughs> now, this hour we're going to talk about communication. And I use that story to illustrate how you can eliminate an argument. And there are a couple of elements that I want to go into in this. Uh, you see, Dad didn't buy in to this kid's attempt to get him into an argument. And he could have, but he didn't. Now, he didn't say, yes, I have. I've bought you plenty of things. Why, just day before yesterday, he would have bought into the argument. On the other hand, uh, suppose he said, uh, suppose he'd know. No, I never buy you anything. Well, that would have agreed with the child. So, see what the ki what people do is they move us on an argument from where they're not making any points to where they figure they can. They work for leverage. They work for a commanding position, and that's what he was going for. All right, Dad, you never buy me anything. What are you going to do with that? And Dad basically said nothing. Now he didn't say no, and he didn't say yes. Essentially, what he said was, well, maybe that's true. But if it is, so what? Hmm? There's no sense starting now. Now, I want to take a minute and talk to you a little bit about arguing, because of the seven sins of communication, that is by far the most uh, difficult to deal with, it because it's the one your kids will use on you all the time. Kids use arguing on parents because it works. Think about it, if you weigh 50 pounds, and you're trying to get somebody that weighs 180 to give in and do it your way, you don't do it by grabbing them by the throat and saying, this is the way it's going to be. You get them, you persuade them. And the way kids do it is they get you to argue. I mean, think of it. If, if a parent had a child who was 8 foot 4 and weighed 500 pounds, would they have to ask for a cookie? I have a cookie anytime I want a cookie. You don't like it? Ha! Ah, so what? So, what we deal with in arguing is the problem that goes along with all kinds of communication, and that's why you're going to hear me talk so much about don't say as much as you feel you need to say. You know, it's an area where you can make a big adjustment and improve things overall. Here's the problem. Suppose that you have, let's say you have a, a little four-year-old, lovely little child, just the pride of the family. 
and it's dinner time. Well, it's dinner time in about 15 minutes. It's just finishing getting it all ready, and here into the kitchen comes this little cherub and says, Mom, I'm hungry. Can I have a cookie? Well, what do you say? Well, the normal answer is something like, No, honey, you can't have a cookie. Now, most parents won't stop there, you see, because they feel, well, you really need to explain yourself to the child. You shouldn't just say no. It's rude. It's abrupt. It's, so they say, no, honey, you can't have a cookie because we're about to have dinner, and it will spoil your dinner. You ever heard of that? It'll spoil your dinner? Have you ever seen a dinner spoil because a kid ate a cookie? Say, look what happened to your dinner. Now I've got to throw the whole thing out just because you had a cookie. Well, that's the things we say. Anyway, you say, no, honey, you can't have a cookie because it'll spoil your dinner. And, of course, the child looks at you and says, oh, okay, and leaves. Right? Sure. You got a child like that, bring them in. Something's wrong. No, they, they're not interested in your reasons. So you say, you can't have a cookie, it'll spoil your dinner. But I'm hungry. That's what you get. Well, I'm sorry you're hungry, but we'll eat in about 15 minutes, as though they cared. I don't care, I'm still hungry. I want something now. You can't have anything now. If I don't get something now, I'm going to die. If you don't get out of the kitchen now, you're going to die. Hmm? And then they throw a temper tantrum. And you say, oh, right here, give a cookie. Problem is, what have you taught them? Well, you've taught them that if you will come out and harass me and throw temper tantrums, I'll give you whatever you want. Could you imagine going and saying, look, honey, I got a new deal for you. If you will bother me, drive me nuts, put me into an early grave, put me on Valium permanently, I will reward you with cookies and cake and ice cream and candy. And the child says, that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> well, the problem is that when you give in, you've taught the child, harass me. My, my advice to a parent who is going to give in is don't hold out at all. Don't argue with them and don't fight and don't, don't resist. The minute they come out of the kitchen, Mom, could I have a whap? Give them a cookie. Here, cookie. Have a bowl of ice cream. Anything you want. Donuts. What, what, what else would you like? Now, the kid's going to end up like a blimp, but you're going to still have your sanity. See? And later on, when you, you are still in good shape, eh, you can put the child on a diet. But if you teach the child that you're going to resist them, and arguing is one of the ways we resist, then what you teach them is it takes at least 15 minutes for me to crack. So the child knows, I go for at least 15 minutes. I don't even expect any results for the first 15 minutes. I know it'll take that long for them to get hysterical, and then I'll get some results. Now, I say that kind of humorously, but I really mean it. You don't, if you're going to give in at the end, don't go through all that hassle. Just give in at the beginning. Just let them know, I am a cream puff. Anything you want, you got it. Okay. Or the alternative is, well, I would really like them to learn to pay attention to me and not hassle me like that. Good. Then what you do is, if you say no, you stick by it. And if you have to, you stop stirring the cream sauce and you take the little cherub out of the kitchen and to their room or to the living room or to dad and say, would you please watch her for a few minutes? And he's like, huh? Huh? What? What's going on? No, oh, never mind. Just watch her. Okay. Other part of that. We think that if we don't give in to the child and the child finally gets sent out of the kitchen, that we've solved it. Well, we have solved the idea that Believe me, if I say it, I mean it. We're being consistent. But the problem is that kids argue with you not because they win every time. See, uh, f well, not because they prevail. Let's use that word. Sometimes you prevail. No, you are not going, uh, you're not wearing pantyhose to school. I don't care how many boys in your third grade class are. You're not. Okay? And you prevail, and they have to go without them. 